Start streaming. Hello, everybody. Sorry Hello, about everybody. that. Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, I am now sat directly next to my router, but I'm going to have to be a bit quieter. Um, so, right. Sorry. Where? <laughs> we, we'll, stitch, we'll stitch this together in post. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for being patient. Uh, yeah. we, prom we promise at some point we're going to stream and we won't have technical difficulties. We're still trying to work out all the bugs, but... Um, this is only our third episode, so luckily, uh, <laughs> luckily we'll we'll get it right one of these days. So thank you guys for sticking with us and being patient. Yes. Uh, last we left off, we were talking about realism as it pertains to tuning with Vocaloids, and Celia was was uh, I had asked you about um, different attributes you you give to your voices to try to make them sound more human or more realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are, what are the kind of tips and tricks for that kind of? Um, for getting your vocaloids sounding more more human, I guess. Yeah. Um, so there's things like um, certain pitch bends that I use. Um, can't really show you them here, but um, you can start kind of learning what pitch bends um, work well or sound more human by um, one of the tricks I used when I was a while back before I was used to stuff was... Um, I use a program called Vocal Shifter, and I would put in some raw vocals there and look at what the pitch bends looked like. Like, if there was a part in the song I really liked, um, I would look at the pitch bend that the singer had there and, like, try to figure out, hey, why does that sound so good? And then um, I'd try doing drawing that same pitch bend in Vocaloid and see, you know, how it affects the voice. And um, through that, you eventually find a few like a few pitch bends that tend to pop up in most singers' vocals um, and such, and kind of trends. You start recognizing some of the trends that are in vocals as well if you do that method. And it's, it's not like you, you don't, um, singers don't pitch into every note as well. There yeah, are, there, are some there doesn't have to be a pitch bend on every single note. In fact, that would be more, it's more unnatural if you are, if you have a pitch bend on every single note. Yeah, um, it's sort of because um, because th there are notes that the singers just hit dead. Um, yeah. So yeah, add, adding, but there are like um, lead lead into li lead ins to lines, um, and and sort of the the tail end of lines always. Well, a lot of them tend to have some sort of um, vocal flair, whether it's a pitch bend or a vibrato or something. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, like, um, but I think what you said is a, is a really good point, um, sort of really listening to v like good vocalists, um, and listening to good, uh, production, like song production. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's really important to listen, especially to songs and singers that you really like. Um, and figure out why, like, why do you like them? Like, why is it during this, sing this one song, during the chorus, why do I like this one part so much? And eventually you figure out, like, it's either instrumental or you're like, oh, oh, it's because of the way that that singer is hitting that note. And then you look in deeper and you, f like, visually look at what they did. And then you can kind of um, push that thing, that that feeling that you liked into your own notes, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sort of like sort of like you said with the you don't want to pitch bend every note. Uh, we had already we had discussed a little bit, and we also said that you don't want to put vibrato on every note either. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are guilty of putting vibrato on every single note when they first start out, either yeah, because yeah. Of, of either because of the Vocaloid pre settings, like if you haven't messed with the settings right out of the box, uh, or simply because they think that oh well people have vibrato in the voice so i should put vibrato on every single note when mm -hmm. in reality that's a horrible idea <laughs> yeah like even like for some songs you can kind of get away with like every other note having mm -hmm. vibrato but even then you have to like take some out because even yeah, every other note is still way too much in most cases some songs it works but for the most part like you have to still 
kind of weave it down a bit. Are there any uh, plugins that you like to use? Because I, I know, in, especially in the Vocaloid 3 and the Vocaloid 4 era, that was the mm -hmm. era of people trying new plugins and, and new things to make the voice sound um, mm -hmm. in a certain way or add a certain attribute. And I know that they don't really have plugins anymore with V5 due to how they've added this new system where, where you could choose different attributes to add to the voice. But in, if for those people who may not want to start with V5 and may want to start with um, a V3 or V4, are there any plugins that you recommend or any that you yourself use a lot? Yeah. So like there's, um there's like the scene vibrato job plugin, and then there's the expressive vibrato plugin job plugin, which is like an extension of the scene vibrato. Um, which lets you put in numbers to generate vibrato on a note. Mm. Um, so it's it's helpful if you're. Um, it also affects like brightness and such and um, dynamics as well. So it's a kind of an easy way to get nice sounding vibrato with just a few um, numbers. It has a def default, and then you can like change it around um, to work with the song you're doing because it kind of depends on the tempo and such. But um, those are two ones I use, and then. Um, one that's good for the Krypton Vocaloids is John Vocaloid V, whatever it was, V3, V4 thing that they did, which oh, yeah. has like different expression types for the voices, like soft power, um, breathing it, or like bre breathing out, such stuff like that, um, which is Krypton exclusive, but, um, it's hard to do that without using that plugin just because the, the phonemes for it are really weird. <laughs> <laughs> in specific um but if you use that job plugin then it's really easy to choose like soft or power and then like breathe out or short breathe out long breathe out stuff like that mm -hmm. um so that's also a good job plugin those are the main ones i use though i i actually don't use most other than that and then other than like export as vsq and stuff like that <laughs> for going from um, vocaloid to utau and such so right one of the main one of the main plugins I think people have been very curious about since well not plugins excuse me but one of the, one of the main attributes that Vocaloid now has that I think a lot of people use but maybe in the wrong way is mm -hmm. growl oh, and, oh, yeah. and that's another one we were talking about um, it, just how people think that they should be using growl because it's there when maybe they really shouldn't, especially with certain vocalists, growl is just not going to work, and it's completely unnecessary as well. Mm -hmm. Are there yeah, it, um, it does really depend. Like I'd say ninety-five percent of the time, uh, it, th there's not a good place to use growl. It's really song specific, and it's really vocaloid specific. Um, for the most part you don't really want to use it except for a very small part of a song. Like you would not want to put growl on for the entirety of a vocal. Like it, mm -hmm. it should only be like at the most, like one second long of growl. Yeah. Um, otherwise it's just, it doesn't, I mean, people, I mean, I guess there's certain singers that might growl a lot, but even then it's not like the entire, it's not their entire vocals, you know? Um, it's a short portion of when they're singing. So, I think I think for each generation of Vocaloid, there has either been an aspect that has been introduced, whether it be like for V two we had a pens, uh, mm -hmm. for V three we got um, we, we uh, was V three, no, it was V four we got cross Yeah, V three was more just more pens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then V four we got growl and we got cross synthesis, and I think for each generation of Vocaloid. Um, when people go into tuning, especially beginners, they think that they have to use these new attributes as as much as possible or else they're not going to be good tuners or something. Uh, where yeah. it, It's not a matter of using these new attributes. You can go your entire uh, tuning career and never use growl i have never used growl and i have plenty of vocaloids who can utilize it. it's more just learning when things are appropriate when should you use growl when should you make the voice softer or when yeah. should you make it more powerful like um someone in the chat was talking about vocal fry with vocaloid 5 um yeah now that's being overused <laughs> mm -hmm. like how growl was um 
And this, like with vocal fry, it's the same type of thing. It's it's not the type of thing you use on every note, and it's not the type of thing you use every phrase. It's like every every. Well, I mean, it probably depends on each note. So it's not the kind of thing you can just put everywhere because yeah. it will sound bad. <laughs> I, I think it's Even a, though it's nice and shiny, but yeah, I I think it's a um, I think it's a trap that most I think nearly everyone falls into. Um, mm -hmm. Because just because it's there doesn't mean it's either good or appropriate. Um, mm -hmm. It's the same in um, it's the same in playing instruments as well. You work out how to do something uh, that's sort of like either you know interesting or unique with whatever instrument you're doing uh, you're playing, mm -hmm. or um, you you're a vocalist and you work out how to like metal scream for the first time that doesn't yeah. mean that you should <laughs> do it especially if you're not very practiced at it um like th there is a time and place for everything i think growing the part of growing as a musician and a, as a producer and and sort of honing your craft in any sort of musical aspect is mm -hmm. understanding when a tool needs to be used and when it's best left alone. Um, yeah, like um, on the note of vocal fry, like a lot of people think that you can only do vocal fry in V5 with the presets, but you've been able to do vocal fry ever since Vocaloid 2. You just have to work for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can do it. You just have to know... You just have to mess with the pitch a lot and mess with um, a few extra notes here and there before the main note. But um, yeah, it's not like it, they've made it a preset so you can easily put it on, but it's it's not like you couldn't do it before. Um, so people saying like, oh, you can only do vocal fry and V5 as a feature. Yes, but as like an actual from an actual edit, like tuning standpoint, no, you've always been able to do it. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, making the tool accessible versus um, mm -hmm. working out how to manually yeah. do something. Now, someone needs to do someone needs to make a job plugin for Vocaloid Four that makes Vocal Fry, <laughs> so I don't have to use Vocaloid Five. <laughs> Joe, my friend Joe just made a really good point in the uh, in the stream chat, which is it's like cooking. Adding too much of one element can throw everything else off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same in production, mixing, arranging, playing, um, understanding how to well balance a piece of music or well balance mm -hmm. a tone is super important. Um, actually, it's one of the things that I've more picked up since I've gone back to listening to classical music. Um, listen to like your... Uh, romantic period composers who really play with light and dark and theme of variation and stuff. A, mm -hmm. a fully constructed piece will have its moments of grandeur and epicness or it will do something very strange, but they're very selective in when they bring it forth and, and what they do with it. Um, mm -hmm. And you can very easily apply that to that sort of mindset um sort of holistically apply that to um other aspects of of working in music it doesn't just have to be classical composition it's it's your mm -hmm. engineering mindset it's your it's your production mindset um yeah Along the lines of, of adding too much and adding too little, not necessarily as it, as it pertains to vocal attributes, but as it comes to the actual vocal itself, one thing um, that we wanted to emphasize is, uh, is when you are tuning, putting the right inflections on the right types of notes. Now, this is something that I find a lot with new producers and I, and I do not fault them. It takes, it takes practice to learn when to do this. But if you are writing a song and you are tuning the vocal aid for that song and you are trying to create lyrics with your vocal melody, you have to be careful with how your lyrics are being sung so that you are not putting the wrong emphasis um, on the wrong vowel or the wrong consonant because that, that ends up making it sound 
very unnatural. Um, a, a good example of this, in my opinion, is um, a song that I actually qu quite love, which is is the song "Die" by um, mm -hmm. Amy, Amy Techno, um, who is an incredibly talented producer. But because they they do not, I don't think they speak English fluently. They therefore don't know how English is necessarily sung or like the structure because there is definitely a pattern to things and a lot of new producers also have this problem where they'll have a really weird stretch of vowel or a really weird stretch of a word that just doesn't just doesn't mesh right or doesn't have the proper pattern uh so have you ever run into that kind of problem celia especially when you're tuning for somebody else for their song yeah um it's kind of well, it's more like, it's less when I'm doing stuff for other people and more when um, I'm just doing it myself, um, like for my own covers, mm -hmm. I guess. Because, um, I mean, most of the stuff I do is Japanese. Um, so I kind of have to, now that I actually know Japanese for the most part, um, mm -hmm. um, and I guess, like, I mean, I don't, I don't actually use English vocalists that much, but I'm assuming it's the same. Like, if you, if, if you sing it yourself... You can kind of tell where the inflections go and stuff, um, but just kind of putting them all over the place <laughs> sometimes doesn't result in anything too good. <laughs> if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Um, it, well, it, especially when you're when you've reached a point where you want a note to be held or you want a vowel mm -hmm. to be held, you got to make sure that it's the right vowel. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to sound very very strange and the reason you can do it sometimes with Japanese in tuning Japanese vocals is because of the way Japanese is structured and how it's um, in, in terms of uh, the you know it's all about patterns and we've mm -hmm. talked about patterns before when it comes to music so absolutely you got to be just be careful with how you're how you're structuring your vocals in terms of the tuning yeah, yeah. Um, Especially, um. Oh, did you want to? No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, like, for me personally, the, like the type of song that's really hard for me is um. Are, like, jazz songs because um, I'm really not used to tuning those. So when I try to tune those, uh, the like where to put the notes, what I'm used to, like where I'm used to putting the notes, uh, the pitch bends, totally just goes out the window. Because <laughs> it's like just all over the place. Because um, like I normally kind of do like every other note, I do a pitch bend. But with jazz, it's like if you do that, then it won't work because the way the tempo is going, you know. Um, so yeah. with that kind of thing, I really have to like stretch my mind to think like I just kind of have to wing it because my my general like methods kind of just don't work. So I have to kind of just be like, oh, hopefully I, this sounds good. <laughs> I could talk about jazz vocals and and like jazz genres mm. for months um <laughs> yeah each... that's definitely like still vocaloid's weakest point i think is like jazz like even just doing a pitch bend going like mm, like even just that is so hard to do to make it sound like um smooth i mean like if you're editing in the pitch window or something it's, uh, it's just like jazz vocals is like <laughs> such a unique style of vocal because it's very easy to slip into like soul when yeah, you're, yeah. you're doing it and that it whilst it's got very strong ties and roots it's not um it's not completely faithful to mm -hmm. jazz as a genre and also you've got a thousand different types of jazz in terms of like and, and you know uh, you know the singers like all the classic singers are as diverse as you could ever wish to find um, yeah <laughs> so it's like yeah you've got your your smooth crooners like michael buble all the way over to your sanchimos and your louis armstrongs who eat gravel for breakfast um, <laughs> and it's just like you know how do you how do you like um I, it very much comes <laughs> comes down to the int instrumentation and the genre um mm -hmm. But yeah, just the general style you're going for. It's yeah, jazz is like a really, it's a really difficult one to get into, especially if like you're, that's not like um, 
especially if it's not like the the style of music you're most exposed to or most listened to um, yeah that's why um i think for me like rock is the most fun one to tune just because i can brute force everything mm, <laughs> like yeah. with um like with ballads and stuff i have to be careful of everything <laughs> i do because you know it'll come through because the instrumental is not covering that much up but with rock i can just kind of like throw as many notes as i want into like a single phrase and it'll just like I don't know, I can put end breaths like way up <laughs> or like way down on the pitch and it's like, whatever, it works, I guess. But with ballads and stuff, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm picking up glass off the ground and I'm like, oh, can't get, you know, I mean, don't want to get cut by that. It, it sort of mirrors the 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 real world in, in, a, in a poetic way in that like um, rock singers tend to be untutored or untrained especially when they start you know it's mm-hmm. your mates in a band most of the time <laughs> yeah. until you get further into your career and so you're sort of just working out as you go along and things are rougher um they are pretty rough and ready whereas you tend to find yeah. the the artists that are now doing ballads have had some kind of tuition or training unless they're yeah, very they've like gone, they've had a class or something or like yeah, yeah. Had some, some sort kind of classical of training choir. or vocal training yeah, yeah they, 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 they'll have a singing teacher um mm-hmm. even even the good singers you know well into their careers now have a singing teacher um yeah. and and like tuition's very important if you want to keep learning um mm-hmm. <laughs> but we can we'll cover that topic another time um <laughs> but yeah like um I, yeah I, I think it's i think it's interesting you you find rock to be like the easiest or the most fun to do because it's just like smash everything in there and yeah very much like feel um, your way through it yeah like i was doing a I was, I was doing a collab with nikki like quite a few years ago uh, it was a it was a Mako cover, or he did the arrangement, and then I did the Mako vocals for uh, some what was it something variation. Uh, yes. But uh, yeah, that song like Mako is really pretty hard to tune because and both don't affect her that much. So I literally like I really that cover was like the definition of me brute forcing something because I was just like I can't get this to sound good, so I'm just gonna add like ten notes to this single, like this single note. I'm just gonna brute like. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw as much as I can and hope it sounds okay. <laughs> and like I sent the vocals to Nikki and I was like, I really, I really tried my best here. I just I brute forced it. I'm sorry, just I hope you can mix it. And he's like, We I got this. <laughs> like, I, don't he, worry. He saved my I butt. But yeah. I it, brute forced that. It, that brings me on to like a uh, a point that I've got down in my notes and it'll be a point that I will forever half on about and never stop talking about is like fix fix everything make sure everything's perfect in arrangement and recording do not fix Mm -hmm. it in the mix it's so hard and it never works Mm -hmm. like (laughs) you (laughs) you can tell a good recording session from a bad one both in terms of like output and quality and the good one will always sound better after production no matter how much time you spend on it Mm -hmm. um yeah, sometimes it's like there's just no helping it. That's how the session goes or that's how the vocals come out. But like if you have the opportunity, like getting it right before it even touches like a DAW or a mixing console is it makes the rest of the journey so much easier. Yeah, I mean, I had that experience, but with like real vocals, like when I was in Japan, I went to a recording studio to record a cover of something Mm. and um, I recorded it. And I was like, I think I did okay. And when I got back and put it on my, like, listen to it while I was mixing, I was like, oh, God. Yeah, I'm not uploading this. <laughs> like, oh, it no. was it was really, <laughs> like, while I was recording, it sounded okay. And, like, I had a friend there to help me. But then when I got back and listened to it, I was like, yeah, I, even with, like, Melodyne, this is just a lost cause. <laughs> so and was that like, I've, I've experienced that as well. Did you, what, for you, was that, like, audio quality or just like performance uh that was it, was, coming across? it was mostly performance i mean i'm not a right. singer so it's like <laughs> i tried but uh yeah uh it was not up to up to par with anything so i just trashed it <laughs> oh, no. it's always it, it is always heartbreaking to do but like 
I th- I think as you I think it was worse because I had actually gone to a recording studio and like you know mm. rented. The- I mean, it's pretty cheap in Japan for a recording studio, but I still was like, man, like I Even spent so a day like, on that. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. definitely sucks. Um, yeah, I I remember doing like two. I I did a two day stint in a studio for one of my projects uh, with a, a, a friend's band. And um, mm. we laid down like three songs of guitar on first day. And then the second oh. day we scrapped everything and started again. Oh no. It oh, was geez. rough. <laughs> but mm. at, yeah, at the same time, like we knew that that guitar was so... It was so poor in terms of what we wanted for the output. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it was a case of like, it's not worth salvaging. It sucks that we spent the time doing it, and it sucks to delete the files. But like, it's not what we needed. <laughs> <coughs> um, going back to tuning vocaloids and and vocals and such. Um, one of the things that. Um, one of the problems that I tend to find with um, bringing vocals into a mixing project um, is really compressed and really loud breaths. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Because a lot of vocalists go through like an EQ and compressor before they hit the mixing desk Um, just so like, like there's less to work there's less to do in the mixing phase. Yeah. Oh man, um, that makes me can I can I jump in really yeah, quick yeah, actually? Yeah, go ahead. Um that does remind me of a pet peeve I have. Not really a pet peeve, but something I've been seeing people do is um with the vocal aid five, so you, there's a button to add breaths. So it will like automate automatically add breaths to the track. Um and people are exporting track and then mixing it with that so they're they're compressing like the whole vocals including the breaths so it leads that exact issue where the breath like you'll be singing and then you'll just hear like (gasps) (laughs) like where did that come from um and like it didn't used to be an issue because you know people would have to manually put in you know put in that's what i do i manually put in the breaths afterwards um but like recently with vocal aid five having that as a feature i've just been Mm. seeing that and it's it hurts because I'm like, just don't. like it sounds better anyway if you do it manually. Like, I mean, I know why they added that feature because breaths do make things sound like more realistic, but like you have to choose the breaths. You can't just let it, you can't just let it do it for you. <laughs> it sounds better if you manually put them in. <laughs> I, 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 I think breaths come down to a little bit of song choice and genre. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I think a reasonably strongly compressed breath works in like it works in rock and it works in some styles yeah. of rap. Mm-hmm. Pop, no. Ballads <laughs> occasionally depends yeah. if like the breath is very sweet and airy and light and beautiful in the rest of the song, then that's great. If it's a <gasps> Yeah, kind like, of, it, it, yeah, like that's it's that's what the vocal aid five sounds. Like. A really good p- placed sad breath, so it, like like a shaky like, and like like if there's been a break mm. and they'll do like a shaky kind of sad breath before they start singing again, I'll be like, mm-hmm. oh, <coughs> child, no. Yeah, that's um. I did that with my my close to you cover with V Flower. I had yes. a breath right before like the last chorus and. It just sounded normal, but then I I used a volume like automation <laughs> to yep. make it do the shaky yep. thing because <laughs> yeah, there wasn't a, a breath that did that already. So I was like, I'll just I'll just make it shaky, you know. Let's put that there. Yeah, like so. Um, I mean, finding treating like a, a a real vocalist, I tend to suppress breaths mm-hmm. um, as much as possible unless it's musically sensitive. Um, mm-hmm. in terms of the piece um, the one there was I'm going to ruin a band for everyone now if you ever listen <laughs> to Muse again in your life you'll mm-hmm. hear nothing but Matt Bellamy breathing on every track <laughs> like he gasps <laughs> before every line and is like as soon as someone points it out I can't listen to that band again it upsets mm-hmm. me but like um, yeah like <laughs> unless it's very musically sensitive i'll tend to suppress as much as possible um Mm -hmm. 
or you know if it's keeping in the genre but you don't have that opportunity op- option with vocaloid so yeah um, you're going the opposite direction yeah you're um, actually adding so like i mean i feel like just a general tip for people um is if you're adding breaths in later um do not have the breath track be the same as the main vocal track have it as a separate track so you can adjust the volume and such and like take off some reverb if it's too much like you should have it as a separate like because i used to do that before i knew what i was doing (laughs) so i would i would have the breath the breath like all um the breath wave file like attached to the main uh the main track so when it was compressing the main track it was also compressing the breath and so the breaths would be really loud um and like you have the option not to do that like it's all in your control (laughs) because you're the one putting the breaths in there um so it's up to you to make sure the breaths aren't super compressed and make sure they're on like their own track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with, some things like that. Yeah, with like a, so a real much. vocal, you get really familiar with automation. Mm-hmm. Um and automation is an amazing skill to learn. If you if you learn how to oh, automate yeah. volume and, and stuff really well, then like it, no mm-hmm. matter what you're doing, it'll be worth having that skill. Um Yeah. A really good um w- a really good challenge for yourself, which I I enjoy doing sometimes. Like um my most recently updated uploaded cover it was a cover of like an EDM or like a you know a remix song, um, and it's a really good learning opportunity to try to uh to try to do the same effects that the original remix had, like all the weird uh you know si- sine waves and like weird pitch drops and like glitch effects. Um, yeah. It's a really yeah. good challenge to try to like do that on your own with no, you know, with just a vocaloid vocal, because you kind of have to <laughs> get creative, and yeah, learn some new things. I, I I think try I think in a lot of cases, trying to recreate something mm-hmm. is such a good. Um, it's a really good lesson, both in. Mm-hmm. Uh, techniques but also in humility because you realize how little like you realize there are a lot of skills that you don't have um mm-hmm. that you do need to uh you do need to practice on um but sorry i've just seen I'm watching chat at the same time it's not helping my <laughs> concentration um, yeah, um <laughs> but, like yeah, one re- thing re- i used to do oh sorry you can... I, was, I was just gonna say like uh, re- trying to recreate certain effects um gives you a really good it opens a lot of creative doors for mm-hmm. you um and trust me the first time you try to create recreate an effect will be the worst way you try and do it it'll be like the jankiest <laughs> fix you've ever done mm-hmm. and then like as you, you then like the next time you come back to it you'll go oh i could skip this step and this step and it does more or less the same thing mm. uh, yeah i was actually going. i was looking at one of my old my old mixing projects back from 2012 or so and um uh oh, oh, oh it was reverse it was my cover of reverse with nami and um i had i still had the old fl project so i looked at it and for the so there's a part in the song where it does panning from left to right mm-hmm. and instead of automating that I literally like clipped every single left and right one and I made it a separate clip and turned the pan thing to the right and to the left for every other one. Like I manually did that for every single pan oh because I didn't oh know about automation god. clips. Oh and so when I went god. back a while back to like look at it again, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I did that? Like why I did that? <laughs> I'm about to blow your mind. I'm pretty sure FL Studio has a, like an auto panner VST in it as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like <laughs> if I, if you want it like properly or timed yeah. a certain way, I just do it manually with automation clips. But yeah, like back then I had no idea. So I was like, let's just manually, you know, <laughs> manually chop it up. I remember um, um I remember that for some reason I, I think I just learned that you could automate uh VST settings. Uh, oh yeah, I mean anything with a slider or anything with like mm. a knob you can automate. So So I decided to for some reason to automate the volume of my vocals by automating the compressor output volume rather than just the track volume mm. like uh, I never created so much work for myself 
Because <laughs> <laughs> that affects the rest of, or it was like, I, I was using like the, the threshold on the compressor or something. It was, I, I was mm. using something that actually affected the compressor and it was the worst decision mm -hmm. I've ever made for <laughs> the things you learn. <laughs> yeah. That's the good thing of saving your old projects. <laughs> mm. Yeah, going back to them is a real eye opener. Speaking mm -hmm. of of learning, um, one thing I I do want to I do want to say, and I realize we've kind of the topics we've kind of been going over tonight have been very much for um, I would say not only for beginners but for established producers. But one thing for those of you who are listening in, who are maybe new producers and have Vocaloid, um, particularly Vocaloid three, Vocaloid two, or Vocaloid four. I don't have Vocaloid five yet, so I haven't been able to to learn how it works but you're not you have, missing much well if you have your two through four program now and go to your singing uh. singing styles and singing settings because there's one thing i would say i have been using the same singing settings for since i've started tuning vocaloid and it, it it just really helps me have a good foundation for whenever I start tuning. So for those of you who want to do it, uh, you go into Vocaloid 4 and you go to Settings. It's one of the very top. You have File, Edit, View, Job, Track, Part, etc. Go to Settings, and then it should be the third one in the list, and it's called Singing Style. And essentially, you it gives you a whole bunch of these doodads. But bend depth, bend length. Essentially, what I think Celia and I keep ha both maintain the same settings where we mm -hmm. set every single thing to zero we unclick everything so that nothing is checked uh, the only thing that we have any automation on or any type of editing on is accent which is the very last thing and i have mine set at 50 percent mm -hmm. uh, and, you and, and everything else we just have set for zero and what I do whenever I start a new project or, or import a MIDI to then start to tune is I will select everything. I will uh, right click into the, into the track and do either select all or select all events. I will go up to singing style and make sure that everything is correct. And that the only thing that has any automation to it is accent at 50%. And then I click apply to a current, the current part. And I would say almost 30% of the tuning work is done purely by doing that because I have noticed that by doing that, the vocal aid is automatically not necessarily flat so much as purely bored. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, the vocal aid is then per, is like on tune and then I have the groundwork for everything else I'm going to do. And it's something that's so simple to do, but I, I find that a lot of new producers don't know that trick and don't know how to do that and so when yeah. i hear their vocal aids their vocal aids sound off tune and it's not because they're making them off tune it's simply that they haven't put in those settings so, it's um just... it's a good thing to note that if you if you just draw if you just are making a new project in vocal aid 4 straight like and you're making your melody and stuff there um it will already be set to that setting but if you import or like if it's vocal aid 3 or you're importing a MIDI or importing a VSQ or anything else, um, it will the settings will be all gross. So you'll have to set the settings, like Aki said. Um, but if you do just draw it straight in Vocaloid 4, it should already have those settings. Yes. Apparently, that's that's what Yamaha told me when I complained about it. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> repeating that. Because <laughs> I was like, why doesn't it do this? And they're like, oh, actually, if you just draw in Vocaloid 4 from the get-go, it will it'll already be there. I'm like, well, okay. Um, so. it's, it's worth noting that, um, especially on the subject of MIDI, um, if you import MIDI, mi MIDI is not just note data. It's your volume data, panning data, uh, velocity data. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and if you are importing MIDI from someone else, be very aware that it can carry data that you do not want, stuff like tempo mapping. Um, and like pitch pitch bends too. Sometimes those carry over as well. So yeah, pitch bends. Um, so yeah, like um, most of the time, if you drag and drop a MIDI region into your DAW, your DAW will throw up a, an alert saying, "Do you want to import all settings?" Um, <coughs> most of the time, I would just click no. 
because mm -hmm. I just want I just sort of want the note data and then I'm going to adjust to my project rather than mm. um, wanting all of the data in there that I then then have to go through and delete. And some of the data isn't easily accessible. Um, so you're always best working from a blank slate. Um, yeah. So I think <coughs> just as a as a kind of wrap up, I mean, the biggest sort of advice I could give for this kind of work is listen very critically to good vocal performances, both like studio and live ones as well. You can really tell the like how the human voice reacts um best from a good live performer mm -hmm. um but find out and listen very critically and, and listen to all of the detail not just oh that sounds really cool or that sounds great or she's got a nice tone um listen to how they use their voice as an instrument and mm -hmm. once you start picking up ideas for that then you can start applying that to your own work. Um, don't know if you guys have any any more in depth and more in depth analysis than that. Um, yeah, I mean, like on that, like it's just really important to when you hear something, like try to figure out. Like it's really important to think about why you like how that sounds, and really think of it. Think of like like you just said. Think of it more instead of like oh, I just like I like it. Think about you know what are the reasons why what's what is really making that sound that you're enjoying um you know think think a little bit more critically about what you're listening to than just i mean it's good to also just chill out sometimes and listen to stuff but um yeah if you really like a song try to think about why <laughs> i think we don't be Go on. i was and i was say and don't be afraid to if you're unsure about a certain tuning or whether if something sounds off or something try singing that line back yourself and see how you sing it and then try to emulate that in your tuning yeah, mm -hmm. you don't have to be the world's greatest vocalist. You can be pitchy as hell. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You're not the one being recorded. But you get mm -hmm. an idea of, as to how the line works. Um, I think it's something that we talked about before. Is just take the opportunity to critically listen to music and, and, and parts and performances. Um, and you'll find your musicianship and your production skills move ahead a lot faster than if you were just mm -hmm. practicing on your own and not thinking about it um, in, in in a critical sense. So yeah, um, <coughs> go go home, do some homework, and analyze, think, and yeah, and hopefully <laughs> your uh, projects will come on leaps and bounds. Um, we're going to just adjust the uh, podcast timing for. Um, as all the topics for timing's sake um because celia has better places to be than spending the night with me and aki so yeah we're just going to go into a, a q a section now uh before we sort of wrap up um send your questions to hashtag zg podcast um and we will answer them or drop them in the chat if uh and hopefully we'll see them um yeah there's a there's a question to start us off with uh for celia um what was your experience working with nikki for silence and how did they feel about using an english lloyd in particular yeah so for that um like before well while he was oh, okay before he started working on it he had been really listening to this forget what song it was but it was like a an english pop like edm song that was really high on the charts recently and he had like tried remaking it and he's like man i really want to make a song like this but like with vocaloid mm. and he's like but i don't know any english because he doesn't he doesn't know a single bit of english um and so he was like hey what if you did that for me <laughs> <laughs> and so i was like oh okay um that was actually an interesting experience for me because I had to attempt to, like, he just handed me his lyrics and he's like, good luck. Um, and they're all in Japanese. They were like all in Japanese. And at that time, I wasn't, I still wasn't that good at Japanese. So, like, I really tried to make some good lyrics, but I also, I had no experience in that regard either. So, like, the lyrics aren't that great. But, like, in my defense, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but, like, yeah, it was, it was definitely an experience because 
uh, I remember specifically on, in our Skype messages at some point when I sent him the vocals, he was like, oh my god, English vocal aids consonants are like so loud. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, because he had never, you know, he'd never tried mixing English vocaloids before. So he was like, How do you do this? I'm like, You're asking the wrong person, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like Nikki was like, what do, how do, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't do do something. I don't know. <laughs> automation, automation, automation. Yeah, I think his product wall was pretty crazy because he was like just trying his best. Um, and it was also like I hadn't really used. I don't even know if I had used. I don't really use English vocaloids that much, so it was a learning experience for me as well because I'm not used to having to mess with pronunciation that mm-hmm. much. And Ivana was kind of like, like at the time, that was kind of the only thing I could think of, like for a, for a. But um, yeah, that was it was definitely an experience. I don't know if I'd want to do it again because it. Well, it came it out hell. fantastic. You should, you should <laughs> know you. it came out marvelous, and I'm proud of both of you. He he did so much work because I didn't do any of the harmonies. He that was all him. Mm. He he did that. <laughs> so <laughs> I just did the main vocals. So props to him, honestly. Uh, we got another question for you, Celia. Um, I love your tuning on end roll. Uh, can you comment about how you got in contact with the amazing Natsushiro uh, Takaki? I think it's pronounced. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, for Natsushiro, it was actually he approached me because I had covered his song near. Um, with Fukase and Una, and I guess he, it, it must have been like on the rankings or something, or he found it on YouTube, but um, he DM'd me on Twitter, and he's like, oh my gosh, I really love what you did there, like, could you tune some of my songs? Because <laughs> um, I guess he really liked how it sounded, so he was like, can you, like, you know, I have a few songs in mind, could you, maybe, would you be interested in tuning them? Um, so yeah, well, he, he approached me, I don't, I don't really have the guts to approach anyone really except for Nikki because like he's he's my buddy but he's um, really nice. <laughs> he's he's the best. But yeah, like uh, he approached me and that's how um that happened for that was Juggernaut and then Endrel was the next one. Um and that one he actually originally was using Miku, but I was like, Hey, can we use someone else? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was like, Yeah, sure, whatever, like let's just go with something. So he he let me choose the vocal for that, which is why it's VI one, which is uh, not common for like big producers to use, really. So I was happy, but he was okay with me using her. <laughs> um, um, Razi Roo, who I know has just left uh, or left the chat earlier, um, um, wants to know what some of our musical inspirations are. Um, I don't know if you guys. So A- uh, Aki, where <laughs> where are you drawing? My, my biggest from? inspiration. <laughs> In terms of what led me to music, I will always credit with uh, Neo Diu, also known as Binu P, but I think he oh, mostly he's goes so by, good. He's by so Neo good. Diu. And he's come back. He had kind of gone mm-hmm. away for a while, but he, but he came back and he's he's more amazing than ever. I adore that man. Um, I adore his music. I think he's, I've only spoken with him very briefly, but he's super nice and he's uh, just the most amazing producer and he has a style unlike anyone else, both in tuning and in music. So if you guys haven't heard him before, look up Niu Niu, spelled R-Y-U, R-Y-U. He made my favorite Vocaloid song of all time, which is April Fool. Mm. Yeah, he's great. Um, For me, I guess I... I would go more for tuner, like people who do tuning, um, because that's more my alley. But um, there's the one, there's the one, well, there's two technically. Um, one of the, my inspirations um, that I kind of learned from was um, their their Japanese name is like three kanji and P, but they they also go by CL. Um, and they mm-hmm. were really popular back, you know, back a while back with, um, they had really good VSQs of like, Sayonara Memories and um, a few other really good VS like covers using Gumi and such, um, and they were my big inspiration. Like I remember, I looked at their VSQs and I was like, "How? Like what? How do they? <laughs> like how is this sounding like this?" Um, and that was back when I didn't really use Vocaloid at all, so I was just like shocked. Um, and other than Stiel, I guess it would be like Iga, Iga P. Oh yeah, yeah, the chat got it. Kanada P. P. I never remember. I, I know what the kanji look like, but I never remember the pronunciation. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, it's them. And then Giga P is definitely my other inspiration. He's he's really good. He's done um, some really great stuff. I mean, he's he's always just on point. So. <laughs> Certainly. 
certainly. Um, for me, like, um, I, I, it, it tends to depend on what I'm working on at the time. Um, I think we can all say like uh, there are certain projects we we take sort of reference material from different artists every time we change project. Um, mm -hmm. <coughs> but I found like the most um, the most in sort of inspiring thing for me in music, or at least the thing that's always driven me to try to perform better or or play more or or do something different. Or, um, has mostly come from when I'm playing in bands and I'm playing with some really excellent musicians that understand nearly sort of everything start to finish process and are wicked performers. Um, mm -hmm. There is nothing, there is absolutely nothing is galvanizing for um, becoming a better musician as trying to keep up with someone who is really good. Um, you work your socks off to do it. So <laughs> <coughs> that sort of um, is it, mostly been like, uh, I remember playing in like a youth jazz band with this guy mm. who was absolutely spectacular at saxophone, like mind-blowingly good. Um, and working, trying to work to his standard was, um, had now really pushes me to 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 um to get myself better um and also setting yourself tasks i i think i need to be challenged in to to feel like i'm progressing so um mm -hmm. i will set myself some ridiculous piece and i'll be like right i have three weeks to learn it that's <laughs> it like and you know i don't go back to it afterwards um so yeah um on that sort of note i've got a uh, one from marvin um what do you re uh, for for Gary? But everyone can chime in, obviously. Um, what do you recommend for people getting nervous when performing? Today, I got a uh, I got an A in my final piano exam. Congratulations! And tomorrow, I have a percussion final exam. Not sure if I'm ready. Um, <coughs> uh, performance is completely once you start a performance there is no stopping it it's like a boulder rolling downhill you're just in it for the ride um getting a good performance out is all prep work um which probably sucks to hear the day before <laughs> your exam but um <laughs> maybe too late <laughs> <coughs> but my biggest advice is practice how you perform um and then perform how you practice so I have never done a musical performance of any importance with shoes on, hand on heart. I don't mm. practice in shoes. I've never practiced in shoes, so I don't perform in shoes. Um, unless there's like, I, I've never been on a stage where there's like glass or anything on it. So like, mm. you know, um, but like uh, if, if I was going to do exams or auditions, then... Um, I would make sure I had a change of clothes if I had the opportunity, or if not, I would learn to play in like my school uniform. Um, just so that when you walk into that performance hall or wherever you're doing your rendition, um, it feels as close to practicing as it possibly can. Your personal comfort levels are the most important thing. Um, that's that's the, so funny because oftentimes when I when I set up for Vogue America, I one of the first things I do is I take off my shoes. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm sure you don't work on Vogue America with your shoes on. Well, and part of the reason <coughs> is because because I'm going to be running all around. I I, I want to be as comfortable as possible that I'm not aching afterward, or, or I'm not overly sweating. So one of the things I do is toss off a jacket. Um, be sure to wear basically I just wear pajamas and then I set up so that I'm as comfortable as possible because sometimes I'm cutting myself not like not like that but like sometimes mm -hmm. I'll slice myself on the rig or on the ladder yeah you know mm -hmm. this that the other and I want to be as comfortable as possible so I'm not stressing um yeah it makes sense but in in terms of like performance anxiety um 
the waiting's definitely the worst part. And then once you're on the stage, as I say, you once you commit to that first note, you're along for the ride. And whatever happens, happens. Um, the big, the biggest lesson I ever learned was don't stop and hit your rhythms first. Pitch can come later. If you play a rhythm with enough confidence, it doesn't matter what notes you're playing most of the time. <laughs> um, only the people who are super familiar with the music are going to ever be able to like really root out your mistakes. Most of the people there are there to hear you play and are hopefully enjoying the experience. Part. But do everything you can to um, be as comfortable as you can. So yeah, practice in the clothes you're going to perform in. If you never practice with shoes on, don't perform with shoes on, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Celia, I think this is a good question for you and I from Emmy K. Um, do you, you start making the melody directly when you when you are tuning or do you start with tuning straight away? Um, and I think I think that basically what that means is do we have the full melody created in mm. front of us when we tune or do we start it from scratch and, and make the notes as we go? Uh, well, for me, I I always have the <coughs> entire melody out first and then I'll go in one because uh, then I can kind of pick and choose where I start. Like I'll normally start with the chorus because if that doesn't sound good, then I'm not going to finish it. <laughs> um, so I, I normally tune the first chorus first um, and like, but I make sure I have the rest of it out just so I can see how I'll mix it as well. Um, and also because a lot of people, well, I end up, I didn't used to, but now that people um, sometimes, if I distribute like a USC or VSQ, people will want the bass as well. Um, so I do make sure I always do that now. I didn't, I used to just like only save the tuned version, um, but it's also nice for other people if they want to tune it later to have a bass. Yeah, I'm identical. I always have the, the full melody composed ready um, before I ever start tuning. And that way, if I have to, if, for instance, if I want the, the first verse to have the exact same style of tuning as the, as, you know, the second verse or vice versa, no pun intended, then um, I know where that verse starts and ends. So I can select what I need, move it over make the edits i need um you should i i am of the opinion that you should always try to have at least the initial bass melody in front of mm -hmm. you and you can change it as needed yeah i think the only time i don't use a have a bass melody is like when i am really not confident that i can make a cover of a song and i'm like i'll just do like two phrases of the chorus and if i can't do that then i just won't do the rest of it like but most of the time i do a full bass but sometimes when I really am not just, I'm really not confident in a song or I really am not confident, like if I can even make a cover of it, um, I won't commit an entire, like, cause it does take a while to make an entire bass. So sometimes I won't do that. But for the most part, I, I do make a full bass. Now, Celia, I don't really necessarily have any opinions on this question because I unfortunately haven't gotten to use this program, but we've got a <laughs> question from Infoholic, which is, um, what do you think of the way Alter Ego uses automation and functions as VST compared to vocal? Have you used Alter oh, Ego at all? No, I can't have an opinion on that either. I have not even touched yeah, it. Yeah, I have <laughs> I have I have one Alter Ego bank, but I have not installed it. So I hmm. I yeah, we don't yeah, really I've, have much. I've literally never it. touched it in my life, so I can't get an opinion. We'll, we'll get we'll get back to you on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we have an opinion, we will let you know. We but uh, yeah, we, uh, I have not used it yet. Uh, so uh, talking about different vocals, I was wondering, do you still plan on making a male rock vocal? Is this something we're really missing? Um, <coughs> I don't think we have anything in that line at the moment um but then again i am meeting a few people on saturday i'll bring the question up um <laughs> see if anything is planned or whether it's uh something we can do i will ask for you about male rock vocals um I'm assuming you want a Vocaloid rather than a voice bank, uh, uh, rather than a sample library. Um, 
that's uh yeah chris so yeah i'm assuming you want a vocaloid rather than a, a sample library uh, i will ask um yeah one more question uh celia do you want to just pick one out of the hashtag do you have the hashtag up oh uh i if you i don't, do not it's no, <laughs> i no, only have the fine. chat up uh aki do you um, want to just pick one more question and we'll wrap up yes um <clears throat> Uh, well, let's do one more for Celia, because after all, I'm a guest. Um, mm -hmm. For Celia, uh, do you, well, this is kind of similar to what we were talking about. Uh, do you study anything that has to do specifically with vocals? For instance, uh, Michi M studies um, sort of the scientific method of human singing, um, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to phonemes. <laughs> do you do anything similar? No, I have no. I just, I just you do my it. best. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just do my best. That's pretty much my method. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't do anything crazy. I just listen to vocals and I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. Let me try that. And that's, yeah, that's about, that's my scientific method. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Right, tried and tested. <laughs> <laughs> tried and tested, mother approved. But that's the kind of thing, like, um, you, yes, you can do music by numbers and theory craft music forever and academics have been doing it for a long time but yeah there's a reason that not all musicians are scientists um and vice versa um mm -hmm. you know that there, there is a there's always a creative aspect um and a lot of the skills you can learn from just solid practice and critical listening um if you're interested in the science areas then like go out go out and search go and read and and listen to people that that spark your interest but like mm -hmm. <coughs> i think it's fair to say that um it's not a requirement in the same way that understanding like classical theory isn't a requirement it's what you're interested in mm -hmm. um yeah i All think right. that's well, probably I I, I think our special guest has to uh, say goodbye to everyone, so it might be a good idea <laughs> to start uh, wrapping things up. What do you think, Garrick? Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, we could we can do that. Um, we might hang around for maybe five mm. minutes if any more. Yeah, questions I mean, come I could through, go, but... and then you guys could keep going if you want. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll do an extra sort of five ten minutes. Um, uh, the overlay might explode so you'll have to bear with me on oh. that but no that's fine um yeah no uh so <coughs> yeah you can follow celia at celia on twitter um do you have a patreon link that you want to give everyone or, oh, or any, um, any other socials uh if you go to my twitter it's actually it's uh, my pinned message is my has my patreon link and such um so yeah, if you just check out my Twitter, it will be the pinned message at the top if you are interested in my Patreon at all. So Cool. And you got any projects awesome. coming out soon that you can talk about? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am, well, I, I'm i working on a cover with Gumi. Um, I don't know if I'll finish it this month because I'm going to Hawaii, but um, I'm working on that. So and I, I don't I think the last time I used Gumi was like five years ago, so... <laughs> okay yeah cool that's the thing so keep eyes peeled for youtube for that yeah yeah it'll be on youtube a nico video i'm not sure when yet but um it's it's mostly done i just have to finish it or if you're on my patreon you already know what it is so there you go patreon and youtube <laughs> for celia patreon. Um, yeah. and also at celia for twitter yeah um <laughs> <coughs> Aki, you got anything to say before we, we disappear Just off? Thank, thank you, Celia, for, for being our guest and filling in CN spot while she's getting herself situated in her new mm -hmm. place. And um, <laughs> thank you guys for having so many great questions for you as well. Yeah, questions have been good. Questions have been very good this, uh, this month, week, day. <laughs> um, uh, as we said, um, as we hinted on Twitter... A few weeks ago we are going to we're going to look to run another podcast this month um it's going to be a far more relaxed we're going to do more chit chatting um 
it'll still all be music based and production based we're going to take some of the topics we haven't covered today um for that one but we're planning something a bit special in terms of what you're going to be seeing us do um something a bit music related so we'll release details on that uh later in the month but it should be like two weeks away i think uh we're planning on doing it so second podcast in december um as a sorry for not podcasting last month (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) Uh, apart from that go and see aki on yeah and you can follow me at zero underscore g underscore limited um or garrick w6 is my personal and yeah just keep your eyes peeled on zero g for the next few weeks as we're going to be running our winter sale as of tomorrow and deals will be going out each week as well as vocaloids on 30 percent off so yeah we'll wrap up there thank you all for joining us we really appreciate it uh thank you for sticking through the tech issues again i promise next time it will not happen i won't change rooms the router will work (laughs) Oh, we'll Thanks get there you guys. <laughs> Bye, everybody. thank you guys so much for tuning in today good night good morning thank you for coming and we'll uh we'll see you later all right bye everybody